Well, Parker, we just don't understand God's reasoning. We can't possibly understand. It's just such a convenient way to get out of discussing extremely important questions that have to be answered for a logical person to practice a religion. I went to Catholic school for 10 years, and this is how I ended up. <laughs> Today, I would like to talk about my experience with going to Catholic school for 10 years, and what happened to my faith as a result of that. Now, I will be sharing some opinions of mine in this video. Yay! They might not be your opinion. That's fine. We can have different opinions. I have friends who are religious. I have friends who are not religious. I get along equally well with both types. I have friends who have the same politics as me. I have friends who have different politics than me. I get along equally well with both kinds of people. So just because I have a different opinion than you does not mean that I hate you, and it doesn't mean that you should hate me. It just means that we disagree. Because when it comes to religion, it is entirely opinion-based. So if you can't handle me saying something that you might not agree with, then now's the time to click off the video. It's a different type of video than I normally do, but I just think I have an interesting experience with all of this, how I went from Catholic school, wearing a uniform every day, going to church all the time, to what I do now. <laughs> it's kind of insane, the transition. So I think it's fun to go and look at what happened exactly and where I am now. This is the only type of video like this I'm planning on making. Don't worry, I don't normally talk about serious topics like this. But if it does well, if, if you guys enjoy watching, leave a like to show if, if, whether you liked it or not, I can do more, but this is the only one I have planned for now. So let's start from the beginning. When I was born, I was born into a Catholic family. And Catholic, by the way, if you don't know, is a form of Christianity. When you think of Christian, that is a type of religion. And within Christian are different types of Christianity. Catholic is one of them. For example, you have other types like Baptist, Methodist, so on and so forth. They're all under the Christian label. Some are more extreme, like Southern Baptists tend to be a little bit more extreme, take the Bible a little bit more literal than Catholics do. Catholics tend to be a little bit more extreme than Methodists. Methodists are some of the most relaxed in terms of Christianity I've ever seen. They're the most open-minded for the most part. Catholics have a reputation for being a little bit, mm. So from the moment I was born, I was raised into the Catholic Religion. Both of my parents, Catholic. We would go to church every Sunday, like you're supposed to do. I was all about it. I was all about it. When you're young, you're told God loves everyone. Jesus loves everyone. You will always be protected by them. They're always there for you. Everything is awesome. Everything is fantastic. Even bad people can get forgiveness for their sins. It's just, overall, it's such a positive thing when you're a young child. Now I went to public school for kindergarten. I went to two different schools and at one of the schools, this is where it gets really interesting. I don't think I've ever heard of this happening anywhere else. One of the public schools that I went to, it was an elementary school. There was this new church being formed in the area. I'm not going to say what it is. They used this elementary school's gym as their church while the church was being built. I've never seen a public school literally host Religion, that's kind of interesting. I don't even know if that's even legal, but I, it's that's what happened. They had their church services at the public middle school until their church was being built. I don't know what the, what the agreement there was. I don't know. I don't know what the details are. That's just what I know. So that was the public school that I went to for half of my kindergarten. So you can kind of see how it's not the most public of public schools, right? And of course, once this church was built by the time I was in first grade, it opened as a church and a school a private school where I went from first through eighth grade. I was part of the first class ever in that school. First year was open, I was there, attending the first grade. Private Catholic school is a little bit different than public school. You have all the subjects that you learn in, in public school, right? And the private schools that I went to, by the way, there's two of them, they really did offer a good education that was on par with the public schools. It's not like we learned less there in terms of actual academics. It's just on top of that, we also had religion class as well. And at my first through eighth grade school, I call it grade school, not elementary or middle school. That's what you would call it in public school because you go to two different schools. I just call it grade school because I went from first through eighth grade. There was no different school. It was one building for first through eighth grade. So we had all the normal subjects plus religion class, plus three times a week, we went to church mass as it's called in the Catholic religion. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we would go, I believe it was Mondays and Fridays, we would go with just our 
specific grade. So like all of seventh grade would go on Tuesdays and Fridays. And then on Wednesday was an all school mass where the whole school went. So three times a week I had to go to mass. It was like an hour to an hour and a half long and involves kneeling, standing, sitting. Of course, from like first all throughout sixth grade. In religion class, you learn about how great God is, how great Jesus is, how they're all loving. Everything is great, everything's positive. And then once you hit seventh and eighth grade, they start to start teaching you more adult concepts within the religion. I will never forget this moment while I was in religion class. There was a kid in my class who I was friends with whose parents were divorced. And you know what the religion teacher talked about? It was divorce and how if you get divorced, you will go to hell because you're breaking the sanctity of marriage. Of course, what the teacher meant to say was that you can get divorced with an annulment in the Catholic church. How it works is if you just decide to get divorced legally, doesn't count in the church. You gotta get an annulment from a priest. And basically what that means is the marriage was not valid to begin with. You have to bring up a reason why you need to have it annulled. Like, oh, I didn't know that this person was this type of way. Or just some something to show that the marriage was not meant to be, that you should not have gotten married in the first place. You can get an annulment and then it's fine within the church. But without an annulment in the church, there are grave consequences <laughs> if you get divorced, especially if you get divorced and remarried. Now, I don't think the kid in my class whose parents were divorced picked up on this. He didn't bat an eye to it. But the way that the teacher phrased it made it sound like his parents were going to go to hell. But it's just, it's concepts like that that start, slowly started being taught to us. Where it just was like one after another. Where I was like, this is not the same happy-go-lucky religion I grew up to believe it was. Another awesome thing they taught us in seventh or eighth grade, I forget which one it was, was that if a baby dies during childbirth or shortly after childbirth, if it has not been baptized, it will go to hell! That's awesome, right? Now, of course, they mentioned that there are processes by, you have a certain amount of time, a priest can show up and perform a different type of ritual that isn't baptism if a child is stillborn or if a child dies very closely after birth. But if that doesn't happen, according to the Catholic Church, the child cannot go to heaven. You must be baptized to enter heaven. And that messed me up for a number of reasons, because number one, that's just evil, that's plain, simply evil, that people can believe that, believing a helpless baby can just go to hell, just for the sin of not being baptized, despite never being born, or being born and dying immediately after, you know? It just seems cruel to me that the religion I was raised to believe was all good, all the time, has these insane beliefs within it that are just horrible. It's like, it's awful. But that didn't just mess me up for that reason. It's also anyone who's not baptized is not going to heaven. So if you're born into a different religion or no religion at all, you're going to hell. You know, it's not like you can help what religion you're born into. And if you're taught a religion from a very, very young age, usually it's birth, your chances of ever deviating from that is very small because it is what you're raised with. It's what you're raised to know. So it's not like most people can even choose what religion they're a part of. It's just what they happen to be born into. It's very rare that someone is born into a religion and then as they grew up, they change their mind. That happened with me, but it's rare that that happens. Although it's becoming increasingly more common these days. It's just the idea that babies who are not baptized and anyone who's not baptized cannot go to heaven, does, it does not fit in line with what I had been told since the moment I was born, which is that God is all loving. Anyone can have forgiveness, so on and so forth. It's just two contradictory sides that cannot exist together. There just became so many things like that that made it very difficult for me to continue with this religion. Too many really almost just pure evil things that no one thought was evil and no one even questioned and it blew my mind. Let me explain a few to you right now. The first thing you're taught about the religion when you're old enough to understand words is the whole story of Adam and Eve, right? Adam and Eve were the first humans that God created. They were created to be perfect, free of all sin, then, Satan, in the form of a snake, comes up, tells Eve to eat an apple from a tree that God said to never eat from. And Eve listens to the devil in the form of a snake and eats the apple. And now, humans have sin. So this is what came to my mind when I was in seventh grade and still has yet to be answered to this day. This has many parts to it, okay? I'm gonna jump around here, but bear with me. When something like nothing happens, the answer for why God would allow it to happen is usually it's part of his plan. That's what they always taught me in religion class was that everything that happens is part of God's plan. Okay, that's what I'm always, that's what I've always been taught. 
Everything is part of God's plan. So, a question that I want to ask is, why would God create humans free of sin, make them perfect, and plan for them to disobey his word and sin, and then make them beg forgiveness for the sin that he planned for them to commit in order to go to heaven? The answer that I'm often given to that is, well, God gave humans free will, and that's what they chose. But that directly contradicts what people always say, is that everything is part of God's plan. And think about it this way. God is God and knows everything that ever has and ever will happen because he's God. He knows that Adam and Eve will sin if he allows them to choose to do it. And he made the choice to allow them to choose to do it, knowing that they're gonna sin and then punish them for it anyway, even though it's a direct result of his actions. He knows that people will use free will to attack other people and to injure other people and kill other people and create violence and horrible, horrible things. But he chose to give people free will knowing that all that will happen, knowing that suffering will be caused to his own creations rather than just making them perfect from the start where nothing bad would ever happen. So when I bring that up, the answer that I'm often given is, well, we just don't have the capability to understand God's reasoning. Okay, that could be true, yes. That's just a very convenient argument to avoid critically thinking about what you're being told. It's just like how they always said as I was growing up, anyone who says anything bad or negative or anyone who criticizes the church or says something that doesn't fall in line with what you believe, the devil's talking through them and you shouldn't listen to them. There's too many convenient things like that where you're told to just ignore valid criticism and valid counterpoints to everything you've been taught. And going off that, if God exists, it is very possible that, that the reasoning and thinking behind everything that happens is out of our capabilities because we are not God level thinkers, we are human level thinkers. But think about it like this. If you are God, you created humans to think in the way that you created them to think. So why would you create them to think in a way that you don't like and then punish them for that when they had no control over it in the first place. It's like, God made me think the way that I think. He gave me the critical thinking skills to question all of this. Am I gonna be punished for that? That's literally what he chose to happen, what he made happen. It just makes no sense and it's really kind of cruel sounding. Another thing is jumping back to the devil telling Eve to eat the apple. Where did the devil come from? God made everything in the universe that includes the devil. So either God created the devil with the specific intent to mess with humans and cause them to sin for the first time and continue sinning throughout history, literally causing every single tragedy, every single bad thing that ever happens. Either God created that specifically for that purpose, created the devil, or the devil already existed and is able to overpower God in which case God would not be a God because there would be something more powerful than him. Using this line of reasoning, the only way, the only way that God as described can exist with all of this in place is if God is not nice and is literally just using all of us for his entertainment, which could very well be the case. That's the only way that this can exist because everything bad that happens is a direct result of God. And you can say, no, it's a direct result of people's free will, but God knows that people will use free will to to make these bad choices. And by giving people free will, he's actively enabling everything bad that happens to happen. By doing nothing to stop it, he's actively enabling it. So it makes sense if God does exist and is literally just using everyone as entertainment. That's the only way that I could see that happening. Remember, this is this is just my line of thinking. I'm just, I, I think it's an interesting story to tell you how I went from point A to point B. This is all stuff that I was thinking about in like seventh grade also. Think about it like this also. You must be baptized in the Catholic religion to go to heaven, according to Catholics. Methodists don't believe that. They don't believe you need to be baptized in the Catholic religion. Baptists believe you must practice the Baptist religion to go to heaven. So which one is right? If you practice the wrong one, are you going to hell? If you are born into a family who practices a different religion, the one that isn't correct, are you going to hell? Despite being raised from birth to believe that that one is right? Because if so, God planned for that to happen. God planned for you to be put into a family that he knows will teach you the wrong religion and then punish you for it, even though you have no control over it. It sounds like a cruel and evil God to me. Everyone is raised to believe that the religion that their family practices is the only correct religion for the most part. So which one is right? Well, Parker, we just don't understand God's reasoning. We can't possibly understand. It's just such a convenient way to get out of discussing extremely important questions that have to be answered for a logical person to practice a religion. So I was having a conversation with someone, not gonna say who it is, but there was 
one really long message that I sent that is, I think, very relevant to what we're talking about. So I'm gonna read that off. It's what I said. Don't worry, I'm not reading someone else's messages. If you were God, first of all, why would you even create humans? You don't need them if you're a God. The only reason that makes sense is for your own entertainment, which would explain why you would give them free will. Watch them start wars, kill each other, fight over everything, similar to why we watch movies as humans. Second of all, if I were God, and my reasoning really was so extremely complex that the humans I created could not understand why I chose for certain things to happen the way they happen, I would make it known to them somehow so they aren't just running around confused as hell. Why would you create a human who you know will worship another god or no god at all, parentheses, you know this will happen because you are god, you know everything that will ever happen, close parentheses, and then punish them once they die for not worshiping you, especially when you make everything in the Bible contradictory and all religious teachings contradictory to the point where any person only going by logic and reason, not just blind belief, would never consider practicing such religion. If God's reasonings really are so complex we can't understand, why would he punish us for not understanding? He knows we don't have the ability to understand. It seems incredibly unfair and frankly horrible to me that a God who truly loves his creations would ever do something like that. And the fact that I think this way is planned and created by God as well. Why would God create me to go to Catholic school for 10 years and then plan for me to learn things that push me away because nothing that I learned made sense, then punish me for that when it was his plan all along? It just sounds crazy to me. If this exact personality type was put into a human, it would be a sociopath creating things just to watch them destroy each other, creating them to not believe you are God, and then punishing them for that, even though you literally made that happen yourself, is just wild. I think that perfectly sums up the thoughts going through my head when I was in seventh and eighth grade. As I was learning these darker concepts within the Catholic Church, it just, it just was too much. It was at the point where it just made no sense anymore. It was just kind of dumb in my mind. So when it came time for confirmation, they called me up to the stage, they put the oil on my forehead, the cross oil, they asked something along the lines of, do you believe in this religion? Are you confirming that you are Catholic? It wasn't, that's not the exact words. And I said, yes, but in my mind, I really wanted to say no and just see what would happen if I just said no. Like, the organ stops playing, everyone just is like, oh, and like look, stares at me. My whole family was there. Oh my gosh, it would be really funny. But I, I just said yes, even though I really wanted to say no. At that point, I was just done. It was like really dark and really nasty to me at that point. Now, do I think that my grade school or my high school, do I think that they were evil? No, I don't think that the people running those schools were evil. I absolutely had some evil teachers at my grade school. I tell you what, I have stories. But at my grade school, I also had some incredible, incredible teachers who were so nice and so awesome. My third grade teacher and my fifth grade teacher especially. But I think for the most part, it's just people who were born and raised into this religion and they never take a step back to just look at what they're saying and look at what they believe through a critical lens. The whole babies not going to heaven if they haven't been baptized thing, it's evil. It's just pure evil. People who believe that because it's part of their religion are not necessarily evil, but it's an evil teaching. It's an evil practice. Most people don't really control what they believe because they're born into it. They're basically brainwashed and force-fed this religion as they grow up. So if they believe a certain evil teaching, it's not necessarily their own choice at all. The religion is to blame. Mm, I just don't believe in really anything in terms of religion. I think in order for God to exist, it has to be a God who is not nice. All the bad things that happen are a direct result of God, but it's our free will, the free will that God gave us knowing what would happen if we use it. Yeah, it's a direct result of God. It all starts from God. We can't possibly understand his plan. Maybe, but why would he punish us for not being able to understand when he knows that we can understand, right? It makes no sense. Imagine if the Catholic religion was more like what I was raised to believe it was like at the beginning. Where everything is just awesome. Everything's positive and happy, always good. The character of Jesus in the Bible is awesome. I don't believe that Jesus ever did anything according to the Bible that was, that was bad. Jesus as a character was always loving, always nice. Imagine if every Catholic person was like Jesus, but instead you find kind of the opposite. That's the Catholic religion I grew up to believe was real, is how Jesus acted not the one that humans who came after him tried to craft and just added all this terrible stuff that Jesus never said, never approved of, right? Jesus would not send babies who were not baptized to hell. Jesus would not send people who got divorced 
to hell. And of course, if you are religious, you may disagree with what I have been saying. That is totally fine. Feel free to let me know in the comments below what you think. I promise I will not hate you if you believe differently than I do, unless you believe that murder is okay or something stupid like that. <laughs> and I hope that you feel the same way towards me, that you don't hate me if I've said things that you don't agree with. It's just my thought process. I think I have a unique perspective having gone to Catholic school for 10 years and ending up where I am with a fursuit behind me, you know, named Come. So yeah, a bit, of an a bit of a different video than what I normally do. I don't plan on doing another one like this, but if it does well, I'll do another one. So let me know by leaving a like. Support me on Patreon. Patreon, yay, woo. All the patrons are on your screen. Everyone who's a patron gets access to videos early. Just $2 per month is all it takes. Become a patron today. All right, thank you for watching. Bye. I've got the time.